Good morning. And uh, wasn't that a good talk from Keith? That was some good stuff. So uh, welcome to DevOps Day Singapore. Uh, my name is Steve Murawski. And uh, as mentioned, I, I'm a developer advocate at Microsoft. And I followed, uh, just a little bit about me, I followed a, a traditional path into IT. I started as a, I owned a garden center and flower shop landscape business, worked as a police clerk. Then, uh, then I went into a bunch of different IT related roles. Most recently, before coming to Microsoft, I worked at Chef um, as a principal engineer on the community engineering team, working on Chef and Test Kitchen and a handful of other stuff. Um, today, we're going to be talking a little bit about story mapping. And um, as, uh, as Sergio, Sergio said, um, you know, he asked, hey, well, why, why would a DevOps audience care about this topic? What, what's important here? And the, the idea for this talk came to me this summer when, uh, when I was at a uh, DSC camp. Uh, we had a small group of folks in working on desired state configuration and DevOps initiatives in their organizations. It's kind of like a working group where people were exchanging ideas and talking about things that they'd been doing. And one of the challenges that I noted was that hey, we've been working on our DevOps initiative or our config management initiative for like a year. And I look back and we did a lot of work, but I really don't know, I, I, can't, I, I really can't verbalize what we've, what we've really accomplished. And one of the techniques I learned um, uh, while working at Chef, actually, was uh, the concept of story mapping. And story mapping uh, is going to help us in a couple of different ways. And to kind of illustrate what, uh, what problem we're solving, I've got a little scenario here. We've got some executives, and they come down to IT management, and they're like, we want the DevOps. I read in my in-flight magazine all about the DevOps, and your job is to now go make it happen so that we can experience these awesome values. We've, we've saw the state of DevOps report, and it says, hey, guess what? If you do the DevOps, your stock values go up. So I want that. So IT management hustles off and they Google DevOps vendors. They're looking, they're looking. Uh, eventually they get a little bored and they turn to you and your team. All right, you go implement the DevOps. I want that now. Either find it in a box and buy it or do what you need. So you run off and you read the Phoenix Project as everybody does, right? And that's, that, that is the uh, kind of canonical entry into, into uh, most people's exposure to DevOps concepts. And then you start working on, uh, because you're following the Phoenix project, you, implement, you realize, oh, monitoring is important, and CI, CD, and config management are important concepts. So you start off in a number of different efforts to do all this stuff. Now we come back a year later. The executives come down to IT management. What did you actually deliver? What value have you achieved for this year-long effort? Where is our DevOps? Why is my stock value not up yet? Because you guys are performing awesome. So one of the things that story mapping helps us do is to focus on the outcomes. Now, as a technical person, I, I really enjoy focusing on the technical aspects. Uh, when I worked at Chef, I worked, on the, I worked on the Chef code base, Test Kitchen, bunch of other tools. I like tools. I like tools because that means I don't have to go have hard conversations with people and worry about process and this, that, and the other thing. Well, unfortunately, in order to have effective outcomes, we need to interact with other, other folks. And story mapping gives us a tool to help have some of those conversations and helps by focusing on the outcomes, the things that we want to achieve. Why do we want the DevOps? Why do we want config management? Why do we want automation? Why do we want monitoring? It helps us share the vision and the goals that we have for our endeavor. And in a way that's easy to represent and, and very low overhead. And it helps a lot of different audiences. It helps us. It helps us be, get concrete about the efforts that we're going to undertake. It helps us share that message with our team. So our team is all aligned on what are the steps that we're going to take to achieve the goal that we want. 
What, what are we going to tell our management about what we're doing? Why are we doing step A, B, and C and not doing step D yet? Well, hey, in order to get to the point where we can deliver D, we need to do these first few things. And partner teams. We don't work in isolation, right? We want to communicate why we're investing in a particular effort or why we are, why we are focusing on a particular technology or why we're focusing on a particular skill set and be able to share that with, our, with teams in a place that they can go look and see, hey, oh yeah, this is why we're doing that. So, I've talked about why we want story mapping, but at the end of the day, what is a story map? Well, before we get there, user stories. You probably have heard about them. We heard about them briefly uh, in, uh, in Keith's talk, but user stories are a huge topic in and of themselves. And we could go on for a couple of different sections. We could spend all day talking about user stories. Hey, if you want to, compose an open space and talk about user stories later. For the purposes of today's, for this, uh, this half hour, user stories are going to be tasks that people do. No more, no less, that's it. We're gonna, we're gonna be very, very high level. And so when I talk about user stories in the context of story mapping, it's just, Things people do. All right, let's get back to the story mapping. Step one, we need to identify the outcome of what, we're going to, uh, of what we want to accomplish. Before we can build a, a map of stories and things, what do we really want to do? So I have a little contrived scenario here to uh, kind of illustrate what, a story map, what building a story map is going to look like. And we're going to start out very, very basic. We've got some automation in our environment. We're not doing a lot of, we're not doing config management. We're not doing a whole lot of, of, of automation yet. But we've started writing some scripts. We've started using them to automate some, some various things. And we've, we're seeing a number of different teams that are, have been re-implementing the same behavior in different ways. And this has led to a little bit of conflict. And we've had some outages because people have run old versions of scripts, different versions of scripts, and, and things have went a little haywire. So we want to reduce the number of outages that we see by 50%. That is our, that's the goal that's been kind of been handed down. It's going to increase stability in our environments. And we need to go about figuring out how we're going to get there. What are we going to do to deliver this? Now, this is just one little scenario. You can use this, for a, you can use this technique for a lot of different scenarios. This allowed me to do a very you know, small subset to talk about here. Uh, you can have very broad story maps. You can have very narrow story maps. This one's going to be a little more on the narrow side. So the first step that we do as we, as we get into the idea of story mapping is to identify the tasks, the things that people are going to do, the stories. Right? Task is a super loaded word. Again, we're going to go really, really high level here. We want to have kind of a functional thing, right? So this morning as I was getting ready, I, and you're welcome for this, I took a shower, I got dressed, and I was, and got ready to come here. Now, taking a shower is a task. I could have broke it down to, I turned on the water to let it heat up, or I got, I got the soap and everything staged, got my towel out, got my shaving kit all set up. No, let, let's just kind of, we're going to wrap this up into one little concept of taking a shower. It's, it's a high enough. I'm not going to go through each step of did I, did I uh, lather up my hair, rinse it, re and repeat. I don't take that much pride in my hair, so you can see the results there. There is less and less of this every year. Um, <laughs> so. When we talk about tasks for building our story map, we want to think breadth. We want to think wide. There will be time later to go deep. So don't worry, we're not going to lose detail. We will get there. And the idea of this part of the exercise is we've got a number of folks in the room, any of the stakeholders who are going to be working on this. Um, it's going to vary based on what you're actually trying to accomplish. But you get a really handy tool. And I like to use 
I like to use sticky notes. I carry many of them with me all over the place all the time. And if you're working in person in a room, sticky notes are great. You can stick them up on the wall, you can stick them out on the table, and you write down one task per card. Or per, uh, you can use index cards, sticky notes, one task per. And you just start putting them all down. And everybody, this is a brain dump, everybody th starts to think of what are all the things that we need to do, all the tasks, all the stories that we need to do to accomplish our goal. We don't have to worry about ordering. We don't have to worry about dependencies or things like that. We just want to brain dump all of the possible ideas. We'll get to ordering them and we'll get to detail and, and all that kind of stuff. And we want to kind of time box this. We don't want to spend, we could spend days and days planning out the most detailed thing that we want to do. We just want to get a very good grasp of the tasks that we need to do. We don't need, it doesn't need to be perfect. It's okay not to have steps. We can add things later. But it's, okay. it, it's mainly the things that we want to think people do. So some examples that we might see are things like, hey, we want a CI-CD pipeline because guess what? Every problem is solved by a CI-CD pipeline. Well, well, I like to think so. But we need, maybe we need a realistic test environment. If we're writing a lot of PowerShell, we want to lint our scripts with PS Script Analyzer. We want to write some unit tests. Get everything into Git. We want to have an internal module repository and start building modules rather than scripts, right? And we want to uh, have admin workstations that are equipped with the latest and greatest tooling in each of our environments so we have known places to go for these things, right? And so if I'm building out a story map, it might start to look something like this. My handwriting's pretty horrible, so I kept the number of words per card down to a minimum. But we build out just a bunch of, just a bunch of cards, at, and anybody can contribute. I did this by myself, but you can do this in groups. It actually works much better in groups, because one cannot dev up alone. Now, after you've, after you've uh, aggregated all your tasks, we've gotten to the point where now ordering is going to matter. We want to start lining these things up in time order in which they need to happen. <coughs> we also want to group things together that happen about the same period of time. And so what that's going to look like is now I start shuffling things around. And we've got, you know, hey, we want to get things in source control first. We need to do that before we really start our CI CD pipeline. Also, early on, that could happen is, and this isn't the final order of things, folks, so you don't need to worry about is this the perfect order either, right? These things are in sticky notes. We can move them around. It's not that hard. We'll see how sticky the wall is here, but, you know, I put a sticky note here and a sticky note here. If I don't like the order, It's not that big of an investment to make a change right now. Now we're early enough on that it's very, very easy to move things around and to play with the order of things. So we don't have to make it perfect the first time. It's very low cost to, change, to move a sticky note. It's a lot harder to move things around once we've actually got our plan moving in in stone. So I've also lined up, hey, guess what? Uh, linting scripts and writing unit tests, that's kind of similar actions uh, or similar capabilities. We'll, we'll put that in after our CDI CD pipeline. And we really don't need a module repository until we actually have modules to share. So we can put that towards the end. Is this all making sense, right? We get a list of tasks. We put them all in a line in, in time order. Now we move on to a portion of, uh, of the uh, activity called, this is, this is probably one of the uh, little more opaque terms. Uh, we're going to build the backbone. And building the backbone is really about identifying the activities that these groups of, of tasks kind of talk about. And you can think of them as themes. Uh, to me, it's really just uh, 
putting some nice labels on groups of tasks. And you can, uh, there's, uh, there's definitely a lot deeper you can go into kind of identifying what these things are, but so I went through and I started, I started categorizing, right? So I started building out and I've got my, I've got my timeline. Very often you'll see in representations of story maps, you might see a line of tape, like blue painter's tape, laid down across to separate. Um, I just used the magic of PowerPoint to run a little line across. But I put some little themes down. So for source control, I want to, that's when I want to get all of our automation in one place. Let's start, let's start with that, right? Let's get everything together. Then we want to have a place to, to play with those scripts. So we, that's, what, that's where we categorize the new test environment. And making sure we have admin workstations in each of those environments. So we have a place from which to practice. One place for all of our process. That's our CI CD pipeline. Right. As, we add, as we add steps like unit testing and linting and, and integration tests, we want to have one place to enforce those across all of our, across all of our infrastructure. And we want to ha then, you know, uh, linting and unit tests, that's kind of a quality concept. So call that that. And last but not least, we want to build reusable packages, and that's all the stuff about modules and module repositories. So I'm just applying themes to the various concepts of, uh, that, are in this, that are in this story map. Once we have our backbone, once we've, so we've got our end-to-end -end flow, we've got, well, we've got a bunch of tasks, we've placed them in kind of a, a, a time-ordered structure, We've given them some labels for some of the themes of things that we're going to be working on across that. Now it's time to create a slice. A slice is merely a selection of those tasks that we're going to work on first, or first and second, third. And how we divvy up this slice really depends on you know, what uh, what we want to do to show the overall goal of what we're trying to accomplish, right? Rather than go and do all the stuff on the left, which is the stuff that we need to do earliest, right? If we go and do all that stuff, we haven't shown the value of what we're trying to accomplish, right? If I go and implement source control and build out a new test environment and that eats up, you know, a good month of my time, what do I have to show for that month? Right? If we go and we talk about, I want to start taking active steps to achieving the goal of reducing failures due to automation, what are the first few things that I need to do? And so for this example, I have identified we want to get source control in place. We want to make sure that we have an admin workstation where all our automation is going to run from in each of our environments so that we're only going to take the stuff from source control and get it to those admin workstations. And we're going to use a CI CD pipeline to go from source control to those admin workstations. That is going to be our very first step into implementing CI CD for our, or to, to bringing control to our scripts and our automation in our environment here. And I can see I'm not taking any, ta I don't have to take a task from every single theme. I only have to take a task for things that matter for, for that particular segment of functionality that I want to bring. This is where we start bringing things down to working in small batches, right? We want to, we want to be able to deliver some value for the efforts that we're putting in and get feedback. What works well? What doesn't work well? Because guess what? You're going to then have a little bit of time before we move on to the second slice. Maybe when we hit to that second slice, we've determined, hey, there are a couple more things that we need to do before we can actually retrieve some value from this. Maybe the admin workstation thing isn't working out. Maybe we need to have uh, some kind of orchestration that's launched from uh, some other, uh, that we're not actually remoting into some admin workstation. Maybe we're 
connecting to a web portal and launching some automation from an uh, interface there. Right? You're going to have a chance to receive some feedback based on the work that you've done. But you've, since you've done work across the whole flow, not just the stuff that's early in the pipeline, you're going to get valuable, uh, valuable information about what you're going to do next. Right. And that's the important thing is, while I may have started working on defining slice number two and slice number three, those things are not locked in stone. Those things are malleable, they're, they're changeable. Again, um, from the purpose of our planning perspective, they're on sticky notes. We can move these things around. We can go through this process again when we've achieved our first slice, or maybe hey, everything looks good, let's move right on to our second slice and maybe we'll revisit then. But we have a chance for a, a retrospective or, or a post-mortem or something to, to take a look at, hey, we've achieved this first bit of functionality, now what do we do next? All right. And to me, this is one of the most powerful parts of story mapping because it, it forces you to think about what outcomes am I delivering not just what tasks am I accomplishing. When we start breaking things up into user stories and we're moving stuff across our Kanban board, we're feeling great because we're doing stuff, right? What the story map then brings us back to is how do those various tasks come together and then how do they help achieve the goal or the outcome that we're trying to, that we're trying to accomplish? So, um, to me, I find story mapping to be a very handy tool. Um, and it looks like I'm running a little fast, so we might actually get a little bit extra break. Um, for further reading, I, I strongly recommend User Story Mapping by Jeff Patton. He will do the topic much more justice than I have in this short little introduction. But if you'd like to talk more about story mapping today, I'm, we've got open spaces. Let's do it. I'm totally down for. Uh, a user story mapping open space. And if you want to find some more from me, my blog is stephenmorowski.com. And uh, you can, my Twitter is down at the bottom of every single slide there. And you can find me out on GitHub at smorowski. With that, thank you very much. And let's have a great rest of the DevOps days. Thank you, Steve.